What is ozone depletion? Well, we all know what the ozone layer is and what it does. It filters out UV rays. And we all also know what ozone actually is. But how does this actually work? How do these how does 99% of UV rays get filtered out from the Earth's surface? Well, basically, when oxygen molecules rise up to the stratosphere, which is about 15 to 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface, it breaks down because UV rays actually breaks the bonds in between these molecules. What they form are two oxygen radicals, which are high, highly reactive oxygens, because basically, it has two missing electrons, which is why it's so highly reactive. Now what happens is, these oxygen radicals then react with more oxygen molecules to make ozone of free. Now if you were to look at the ozone structure itself, it has a resonance structure, which means that, there, that between these oxygens, um, the bonds is actually somewhere in between a, a single bond and a double bond. So that is why the um, ozone would then react to make, would then break down to form oxygen diatomic molecules and one oxygen radical because it actually absorbs low energy UV, low energy UV light. So that's how the ozone layer actually works. First, by absorbing high energy UV rays to break down the strong double bonds in the oxygen diatomic molecules. And also by absorbing low energy UV rays by breaking by using those rays to break the ozone the ozone bonds. But because of the vulnerable resonance structure of ozone and also the highly reactive oxygen radicals, the equilibrium of the ozone layer can easily be disrupted by other substances. Some pollutants would include CFCs and CFC12 because they would break down in the stratosphere and chlorine radicals, which are also highly reactive, would be produced. It is mainly due to these chlorine radicals that cause pollution to the ozone layer because they would react with the oxygen radicals and ozone. These CFCs and CFC12s come from refrigerants, aerosols, foaming agents, cleansing solvents, and also used for expanding plastics. Another pollutant to the ozone layer are nitrogen oxides, which come from internal combustion engines, jet airplanes, and power stations. But the good news is we do have alternatives to one of the pollutants, CFCs. An example is chlorodifluoromethane, which is different to CFCs because it contains less chlorine compared to the structure of CFC itself. Additionally, this alternative is the cheapest and most commonly used alternative. HFCs and hydrocarbons are also alternatives, and although these two alternatives are actually the best alternatives because they do not contain chlorine at all, they are more complex, therefore they are more difficult and more expensive to make. You can actually find the precise wavelength that is used to break the bonds in ozone. You can do this by using this equation, where Planck's constant, the speed of light, and the enthalpy value is incorporated. So you multiply Planck's constant, which is 6.26 times 10 to the power of negative 34 kilojoules per second, with the velocity of light. Then divide the whole thing by the enthalpy value of oxygen, which you can deduce from the enthalpy value in your data booklet. This gives 241 nanometers, however the actual wavelength required is 330 nanometers. Looking at the actual mechanism of how CFCs destroy the ozone layer, it is the weaker carbon and chlorine bond and not the carbon and fluorine bond that breaks using high energy UV rays. The radicals formed breaks ozone molecules down. In these equations, you can see why chlorine is really destructive. Not only is its radical structure especially reactive, it is also reused in its own equilibrium, where the chlorine radical can be used over and over again to break ozone down into chlorine oxide and oxygen molecules. As for nitrogen oxides, first, nitrogen dioxide breaks down into nitrogen monoxide and an oxygen radical. Then, the radical would react with ozone. Similarly, nitrogen monoxide can react with ozone to make more nitrogen dioxide and oxygen molecules. The overall equation can be given as two ozone molecules reacting to make three oxygen molecules with the help of nitrogen dioxide. Everybody's heard about the hole in the ozone layer above Australia. But do you know that there are seasonal holes in the ozone layer above the North and the South Pole? These holes are as big as the size of Texas. 
It is believed that they are caused by hydrochloric acid and chlorine nitrates being frozen in the water vapor in the North and South Poles. Because they are more stationary in these ice crystals, they act as catalysts that can produce hypochlorous acid and chlorine. So when spring comes, the ice melts and these molecules break down and a lot of chlorine radicals are produced. However, this is seasonal, so when the sun warms the air, ozone gradually increases again.